Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are gonna be talking about two different types of switches. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because there seems to be a lot of confusion online as to which switch to use for your application. Now I know we're talking in general, I mean, there's arbitrary uses for switches all over the place, CNC applications, there's multitudes of uses for them. Um, what I've got here, of course, is the standard V156. Um, many vendors carry these, I've carried these for years. These switches work incredibly well, uh, they're incredibly reliable, and they work really great for general applications. Now when I say general applications, um, one thing you'll notice real quick on these switches is there's a port right here that's open. Okay, now with this port being open and you can see your terminals here, you realize, or you should realize real quick, these are not IP67 waterproof switches. IP67 is a waterproof rating that we use in industrial industry. Um, if you were to use these in an environment that they're constantly getting wet. Now when I say constantly getting wet, if you're using a mist cooler on your spindle, you're cutting metal all the time, these are not the best switches to use for that application. Okay, if you're using a plasma system and you have a water table and you're constantly splashing water on your switches over time, these are going to wear out very quickly. Okay, you'll notice your tolerances will fade very quickly. Why? Because once again, these are not IP67 rated. Now, you're probably saying, Vim, what the hell is the difference? I don't know. Well, let me show you the difference. These are my new Zippy, that's the brand name. These are VW1 switches. These are out of Taiwan. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what we have here. If we look at our plunger, and again, this video is being shot in 4K, this is a rubber boot all the way around the actual trigger. Okay, you can see that boot depress very clearly as the trigger is actually um, set off. Now, the other thing to pay very close attention to is you can see right inside the switch, we've got our silicone, it's potted. So it's completely waterproof. You can see that gloss and all that is is silicone all the way in there. You'll also see that your terminals are brass, okay? Totally different class of switch. Believe it or not, they mount in the same pattern. The actual, uh, the bolt pattern is the same. Um, again, these are good for up to 250 volt rating. Uh, you're pretty much set with any application for CNC I can think of, but if you're running a full scale mill, if you're running a 6040 or a Chinese mill, and you want a waterproof switch because you do a lot of, once again, metal cutting and you're using mist cooling as you should be, then these are the switches to go to because again, they are designed to be waterproof. So longevity wise, these are going to last a hell of a lot longer. Now, using these switches does not mean we cut corners. When I say that, you still need to use, I recommend using minimum of shielded cable, preferably double shielded cable. Um, again, very, very simple uh, to solder these in comparison to these because you can see here on your comm terminal, you have that bend that comes in, you have to cut your leads in a different angle. These are straight shot. So again, you got your normally closed, normally open and calm right here and everything is just a straight shot. So which is best for your application? Once again, if my woodworkers are out there, this is gonna be your general switch for that application. If you're dealing with uh, woodworking now, but plan on going over and crossing over, you have to weigh the initial investment. These naturally will cost more than these because of their applicational use. But overall, um, I get questions a lot on, is there a difference in quality? Well, not really because I haven't done a time study naturally to see uh, how many triggers you're gonna get with these, but I can tell you right now, they are made in Taiwan, they're ISO rated switches, they work incredibly well. And again, uh, clicking mechanisms on both are excellent. The big thing here, I think, is really to focus on your applicational use. If you plan on expanding your system into using uh, mist cooling on, for your actual tooling, this is something to look at. Because eventually, if your switches continuously get wet, you're going to find that you'll be replacing them quite quickly. Now again, when I say wet, I mean actually wet. I don't mean that if you keep your machine in the basement and you're dealing with you know climate changes, usually that's not going to affect the switch, okay? Uh, cleanliness will, so regardless of which switch you actually pick, cleanliness is everything, guys. Use an air compressor, 
Um, I always say service your machine easily 15 to 20 solid hours of use. You should be servicing and cleaning. Uh, cleanliness is literally next to godliness when it comes to anything with a machine and robot. Um, it will definitely increase the longevity overall. Now that being said, I'm going to be offering these as the bear switch, which you guys will install yourself. And I've gotten lots of requests for a turnkey version that is already pre-done. Now, I can tell you right now, this is the only waterproof switch on the market that's using 22 gauge double shielded cable and it's pre-installed. Now, what makes this switch different as well, is you can see they're already pre-set up for uh, normally closed setup, which again is what you should be using. You can see the end cap on the cable. You can see our glue is actually coming out because I'm using a uh, double wall heat shrink. This is very, very thick industrial rated heat shrink. You can see it right here as well on your terminals. So once this is heated, you can see the glue that actually penetrates and actually surrounds your conductor so that we waterproof seal these uh, again, trying to keep as much moisture out as possible, and again, you have an industrial rated switch. These are turnkey. All you have to do is install your preference of connector on the end. I do have GX16 three-pin connectors I can install, but I will be offering this assembly as well because, first of all, I have no idea why no other vendor has figured out these are a requirement. And secondly, uh, this is something that again, will make many lives easier in terms of you just selecting your end connector and you're ready to go. You can see here how they would mount. And again, using 22.2, you have a lot of flexibility. So depending upon where you're mounting them, you're set. Um, the one thing I do like about these switches, again, is the size. You can see how small these are on standard switches. So if you want to mount them on a 6040 up to a Bridgeport mill, you're golden, okay? So it fits all applications. And again, we've covered all bases. My DIY crowd right here. Uh, my DIY crowd, if you buy the switches, I highly recommend you go in with the 22.2 like you see here. Because once again, flexibility-wise on the double shielded cable, you can see your minimum bend radius is very tight. Very simple to terminate as well. So you've got all switches now covered. And once again, application will select which switch is best to use and budget, of course. Um, again, don't be foolish. If you are dealing with a plasma system, you're dealing with a water table, you're getting a lot of splashing, a lot of water uh, on your actual mechanics, I would t I typically say if you don't have the money, wait until you get the money, do it right the first time. Um, and that goes for any system, guys. You know I tell you all the same thing. Don't spend money you don't have to, but if you are going to add switches, don't cut corners and do it half ass. So again, guys... Uh, for all of my supporters out there, I love you guys. The channel is growing ridiculously fast. Um, uh, I've been extremely busy, so please forgive me. I'm trying to get back with as many people as possible as fast as I can. Please remember to continue to like and subscribe if you just found the channel. And again, if you need to contact me for questions or quotes, uh, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com or through my eBay store. Again, you'll see the uh, link in the description below. The other thing to keep in mind is I get a lot of questions on um, different types of rates. If guys can get um, discounts, if they order direct through me. Guys, I'm telling you right now, if you order direct through me, I'll do my best with you. But you're auto -read, automatically already saving a minimum 6 to 7% sales tax because eBay is now charging sales tax. So I do my best to work with everyone, especially my international clients. So again, um, I'll do my best. If you message me, I'll put together packages, uh, again, based on um, what I can do naturally with my wiggle room. If I have any, I'll do my best to support you any way I can. So again, guys, thank you for your support. Take care.